Hi everybody, uh, your work this week is going to involve product analysis. So we're going to have a look at product analysis again. Now you've looked at this once uh, and we want you to have another look at it because it's a very important skill that you're going to use uh, this year and next year and if, certainly if you study uh, up to GCSE or possibly even A level. Now product analysis is a very useful skill. So it allows you to obviously analyse products. You can also use it to compare products. There's no point comparing products unless you're going to compare one specific feature with another. It's no good comparing one product size with another product's price. You're not comparing the same things. Um, and then with this information, we can use that to inform our designing. So first of all, quick refresher, what does Access FM stand for? So we looked at this the first time round. So hopefully you will have remembered it. Uh, lots of you did some really good work. Uh, so what do those letters stand for? So have a think about that. Uh, so I want you to just pause this video for a little bit. Have a think about that. And then when you think you've got them all right, then press play and you can see if you're right. So. So the first letter is A, which obviously stands for aesthetics, which is all about how things look. That uh, second letter is C, which obviously stands for cost, which is about all about the money. So how much they cost, is it good value? Is it good value compared to other similar products? Uh, the second C stands for customer. So whoever is gonna buy that product uh, we always have to think about the customer because we're designing products for customers. We're not designing them for ourselves. We're designing them to be commercially viable so that you could sell them and make money from it. Uh, the E stands for environment. So you need to think about all things related to the environment. So an easy way to think about that is if you look at that triangular recycling symbol, it's a continuous loop. So we need to think about products from when you're designing them through when they're being manufactured, when they're being delivered, when they're being stored, when they're being used, and then at the end of their life, when they're being uh, recycled or reprocessed. Think about it as a big loop. Uh, next we have S. So the first S is safety. Is a product safe in use? So imagine if you designed a fighter plane that didn't have a harness, uh, didn't have a canopy, and didn't have an ejector seat. How safe would that be in use? Pretty unsafe. Uh, second S is size. An easy way to compare sofas, for instance, is size. Uh, then we've got F, function. What does the product do? What's it intended to do? And what does it do? And lastly, materials. So again, materials links very much back to things like the environment. Uh, so at the end of a product's life, can we simply take it apart and recycle it? Do we even have to take it apart? If it's all made of one material, can it go straight into a recycling bin as it is? Or do we have to take it apart? Or is it so? Is it put together with so many different materials in such a way that you can't take it apart? You'd have to smash it apart and there'd be bits everywhere. So it's almost impossible to recycle. So always think about those things. So we're gonna have a look at product analysis to develop your thinking skills when looking at different products. So firstly, on the left is a picture of a hairdryer. Um, now, here are some possible questions you could ask when you're thinking about this product's aesthetics. So thinking about how it looks. So you could ask yourself, why is the hairdryer in the shape of an L? Is there a reason that some parts are shiny and other parts are not? So on that picture you can see in front of you, the left hand side with the name and the logo on it is shiny. The right hand side is not. It's a very matte finish. Looks completely different. Uh, why does it look attractive? Now, I could have written, does it look attractive? Then all you'd have to do is write yes or no. But I want you to answer the question, why does it look attractive? So you need to answer it in a proper sentence. So if you think it looks attractive, you have to explain why. And if you think it doesn't look attractive, again, you have to explain why rather than just writing yes or no. Now, here is a possible answer. So if you have a look at that diagram there, you can see, if I can use my highlighter pen, on the right hand side up here, we've got these arrows and the arrows are drawing in cold air. So this is just normal air in the room where you're using your hairdryer. And then it passes through the fan and motor where it's propelled and sped up. A bit like lots of other products like jet engines, for instance. And it passes through these electrical coils here. These bits that I'm trying to highlight for you. And these are simply coils of wire that are heated up by having electricity pass through them and as the air passes through there the air heats up and it gets hot hence it comes out the other end of the hairdryer hot 
Okay, so why is the hairdryer in the shape of an L? Well, one answer might be the L shape is a simple way of creating enough room for the heating elements and the electrical control parts. So down here, in this section here, are all the electrical control parts. So we've got the switches, the fuse, and so on. If the electrical parts were in the same space as the heating elements, they could overheat and potentially create a short circuit and catch fire. Not what you want when you're trying to dry your hair. So that's a possible answer for why is the hair dry in the shape of an L. Now, on the following slide, the slide that you can't quite see, there's a lot of other questions. So you're going to work through those questions, uh, answering them all in full sentences, uh, present your work as shown on the next slide using a different text box for each section, make it look good. So the last time round we did this, some of you made it look really good, but some of you did some work that looked like it could have been made a little bit better. So always thinking about presenting your work today it was one the best people best piece of work you've ever done and two it's easy for the reader so i'm hoping that my slides are easy for you to read uh, so up on the top right up here if i can use my highlighter pen up on the top right you can see along here we started up here so i showed you an example product analysis then we're moving on to the next bit where you are going to do the product analysis exercise and lastly we're going to finish with you doing the product analysis online work so you can see how we've started here and we're moving along here and then you'll finish up over here so if you ignore my scribbly highlighter work on each page there's a little story so it shows you where we're going with the story and try and use your presentation of your work so that it's easy for the reader to read now, there are lots of questions here. You'll need to pause this and work through it. So I'll be quiet. You can hit pause and you can start to answer all those questions. And you will need to think about it. You might need to look it up. Uh, there is enough information on that page for you to look up the details of that specific hairdryer. So it's up to you now. So that's the first task. Well done. You're back now, done the first task. This is the second task. So you're gonna follow the link. Uh, so the link is, I'm hoping the link's in the video. The link will also be on the classwork as, a, as a, an obvious link there. And you should end up at the page on the right, focus on product analysis. So look through those sections on that right hand, or the left hand blue menu. And then you're gonna complete the exercise at the bottom where it says activities, second tab, product analysis. So just to make sure we're all clear, you're going to have a look at this bit here. OK, nice and simple. Uh, to complete this week's work, you're going to have to submit two pages of work. The first page is the product analysis for the hairdryer. And the second page is the product analysis from the focus on product analysis online stuff. OK, they both need to be uploaded to the Google form so that it's then submitted as a single piece of work. Right, any questions? Uh, we will all be online to help you this week. So any questions, contact us, send an email, send a private message, uh, put it on the stream, however you wish to do it, and we'll help you. Good luck, well done.